Sub Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for you yo as part of their custom monthly music review. And if we switch over to here we have ourselves a track on the screen, this is from Rina Sawayama. This is titled Who's Gonna Save You Now? So we're gonna listen through this track from start to finish and we're gonna hear what we think. Let's go! Let's go! Oh, is this a live performance? It's so powerful with those synths and the drums, man. I mean, it's just so powerful. Everything's so dense and compact and tight. It's such a short form factor track, but there's absolutely no filler, dude. The power behind it, dude. I wish you well, but go take it somewhere else. Is this talking about self-pity or something like that? Is that what it's about? She's had her fun, but now they've got to sort their own stuff out? Dude, the synths and the guitars and the drums and everything are giving me life, man, as well as those vocals on the side, dude, they're stunning. Great use of the organ as well. I mean, just the power behind that rise there. I didn't mean to stumble on a live performance, by the way. This is just to be clear. This is available on Rina Sawayama's YouTube page. I, I found this. This was... The performance from it i think um just it's incredible that they can perform this well live as well it just sounds like a studio recording to be honest the guitar solo dude Very 80s power ballad though, isn't it? Oh, holy, wait, wait, was that not live? Wait, did he re she record herself playing it live? Where did the crowd come from? I can't, because that was just such a tight finish there. Did they capture that live? Was it meant to be kind of like the big 80s concerts where they had the massive crowds and stuff like that and the big synths and everything like that? I'm going to listen through this track one more time just to hear a bit more of the story and then we'll do the conclusion because I'm quite excited about this. 
And welcome to the conclusion of my review of this track from Rina Sawayama titled Who's Gonna Save You Now? Now, now what do I think this track is about? I think this track is about someone, a Rina, who has just lost patience with this person who has been screwing them around. They are done with their shenanigans and they're saying, look, you've drained the river, you've, you've burned the bridges and everything like that. You're gonna have to deal with the consequences of your actions now. It's, it's, you cannot fix this. That's basically my interpretation of what this track is about. And I think that the beauty of this, right, if I'm not mistaken, and I think with this track is she is singing her soul out, man. Like she is a phenomenal vocalist. She in the mid range, in the middle of the stereo field, completely handling fantastic presence there, capturing the listener's attention. But it's also those really intense little side parts there where the vocals go to the far left and right sides of the stereo field. And they're like a call and response between the two. Like you get her in the middle and then you get her on the sides. And it's just beautiful, man. It's just such great attention to detail there for the listening experience it's so invigorating to just have that effort put in to keep things interesting because you're kind of listening oh what's happening here boom this you know and there's harmonies there as well they're not the same note they're not unison tracked there's maybe intervals there that are going on like um, i wish you well but you know that part like in the th third quarter of the chorus part there where they focus just on that part and then boom she's back in the center and there were also these wonderful vocal runs there she had a sensuality and it was a very provocative performance there but also at the same time it was mature and it just sounded like someone who was just so completely done with their bs right just the way that we elevated it with that key change later on rolling around with those riffings and those higher range they're going into a head voice there very very comfortably it was stunning dude it was absolutely stunning and I mean, I'm, I'm blown away by just how much room there was for her to do that as well. We didn't have a situation in the song where things were too claustrophobic with the rest of the elements within the accompaniment, even though the, the reality of the situation is, right, that it there was a lot going on. There was this, the, we started with these wonderful distorted guitars there, those triplet grooves with the drums there with those kicks, etc and some fills there bringing it in. The bass line thick and huge in the low end. We had the synths. We had those kind of almost jump by Van Halen-esque kind of square synths there with da 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 with arpeggiated as well later on there. And it's not just the fact that we had so much going on with the vocals and the accompaniment, it's that it all managed to niche together so well in the frequency spectrum and things were nice and wide. I mean, that's more of a post-production thing, but it's also knowing how to arrange layers within a track in a way that is palatable with the listener and doesn't overwhelm them. So we have someone who's an incredibly strong singer and is not only capable, but also creative with the way they approach it. It's also the fact that the lyrics have a sense of assertiveness to them which is quite domineering and we have a track which is written in a way where you've got all the boxes ticked off for the specific genre in a way that's very palatable and it sounds like a live show even though apparently it just wasn't with how tight the low the last part was but what also blows me away is just how much there was into this three minute 20 part like it was just three minutes 20 we had lead guitar solos and different verse sections and chorus sections and there was absolutely no filler there as well the, the transitions were seamless we had time for a key change there was absolutely no disregard for the attention of people who are checking out rena's work for the first time or her loyal most loyal fans everyone got a really solid dose of their material and it was great for the guitar solo to have had those tremolo pickings there for it to be so and not so thoroughly intoxicating with the coloration of all these incredible triads that we had there with occasional extensions by virtue of the vocal tails on those melodies but just it was so ferocious as well because the it was just a simple bomb 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 that was the three note bass line there that we maybe had some sort of the aaba structure on with the chorus but aside from that we stuck with that idea and then modulated it and that was enough and i think that the tracks motif to kind of cap everything off and tie it in a bow sounded like we were celebrating the fact that we'd escaped from that toxic kind of awful situation where we're someone that we couldn't trust or rely on and that we just simply wanted to get lost it sounded like we were on top of a stage shouting that out letting the world know that that was the situation i think that's incredible 
incredibly respectable and I'm glad I had the opportunity to hear it. I think that was a really smart way of tying everything into a bow. And with all that out of the way, basically you've just got your studio recording, mixing and mastering where it was splendid. We had a situation here where with Rina Sawayama, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was commercial grade. The vocals were tight, whether they were the more raw kind of parts with EQing, filtering and reverb, or we had the filter parts on the sides there. That sounded very 80s, dude. I, it's just the way they were processed with, with sort of synthetic elements there, but in a way that just sounded so epic so powerful and the, the, the guitars bass drums the essence etc everything else in the mix was nicely niched together and tight in the frequency spectrum things are nice and wide in the stereo field with constant movement for the various instruments around it without being disorienting or overwhelming there was dynamic range to this track it wasn't the same loudness all the time which is great it was allowed to breathe and then finally we just had the fact that it was nice and loud without pumping so the limiting bus compression was sorted. I mean, effectively, this is an incredibly positive review of this track from Rina Sawayama titled Who's Gonna Save You Now? And hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show us some love via our various social medias and our YouTube page and stay cool and stay safe. And please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as either help more than never thought of crazy stuff going on in the world. And I'll catch you in the next SV Patrons video. Spider Hands out. <laughs>